test. Okay, everybody, I, I just got the okay from Peg Hill that we could go ahead and start. So. <laughs> So now it's my honor to recognize each of the candidates running for mayor for the city of Columbiana. They are in alphabetical order by last name, Jerry Bice, Susan Redhead Kahn, David Mitchell, Lamar Vick, and Teresa Whiting. Thanks to each of you for being here this evening and for your willingness to serve as mayor for the city of Columbiana. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, now let me briefly try to explain uh, this portion of tonight's forum. Uh, each of the candidates will be asked the same questions and given two minutes to respond. The sequence for answering the questions will rotate alphabetically. What we're trying to do is each candidate will have a question to answer first, and each candidate will have a question to answer last. None of the candidates have been provided with the questions prior to this event. The candidates will respond to these questions in this alphabet. Um, starting in just a minute and that will continue through the uh, through the question and answer portion in the interest of time there will be no opening statements there will however be the opportunity for each candidate to provide a closing statement and these closing statements should be no longer than three minutes we will have a timekeeper in front who will provide each of the candidates with a countdown during their answer by holding up a card indicating the time remaining now let's begin with our first question And Mr. Bice, if you want to work your way to the, the podium. Okay, our first question for this evening. Mr. Bice, why do you want to be mayor for the city of Columbiana? Well, I think as mayor, we have a lot of things that need to be accomplished. Of course, we have an outgoing mayor. The, the main reason I decided to run for mayor because the last time, nobody ran for mayor. Luckily, this time we have five great choices, and everyone should have a choice. Everybody, everybody needs a, a voice in being heard in the city through your vote. So I think by having this many different people to, to represent Columbiana, it would be great. But I myself would love to, you know, help the city grow, see the youth athletics grow, there, you know, so much that can be done, and it's a great city to, to do it in, that I myself would be honored to serve as your mayor and to continue the growth that's going on right now in the city of Columbiana. Thank you. Ms. Kahn. Same question. Why do you want to be mayor for the city of Columbiana? Well, I'm just like him. I'm proud to see all the people run. We haven't had a choice for a while, and now we have five good ones. And, you know, that means a lot to have a choice, to have who you think will lead the city and go forward. Uh, there's a lot of things I would love to try to accomplish if I'm elected mayor. Uh, you know, there's just several, several things that, take priority, you know, schools, uh, sidewalks, streets. Uh, basically, we just need to all work together and try to improve our city. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell. Same question. Why do you want to be mayor for the city of Columbiana? Well, first of all, Hello, everybody. Good evening. Glad you're here. I'm David Mitchell, and what I wanted you to know is that for all of my adult life and career, it's been sent, spent in service. Uh, the first part of that service was in the military, uh, former fighter pilot in the Air Force, and then after I left the Air Force, it was in the defense industry. And then in that capacity, it was serving our war fighters who also serve you. So now that I'm home in Columbiana, it's time to serve the local community. Now, most of you may not be aware, but I've been a part of this community for almost 50 years, and I'm going to do something that's going to upset my wife, but I'm going to ask Kathy to stand up. <laughs> so like most of the other candidates running for mayor, I think all of the other candidates running for mayor, um, 
you know, we know and we love this town. And in my case, I've been a part of this community for 50 years because of that beautiful young lady right there that I met and fell in love with almost 50 years ago. So, but she's lived here her entire life. She was born here. She grew up here. She sang in the church choir, went to school here. She used to work in a beauty shop here. She even worked at the Elastic Plant. And here's something that a lot of people don't know, but she took that beauty shop when I went to Auburn, and she was putting me through college, and she was working down there. And she used to be the shampoo girl and manicurist for Evelyn Jordan, Shug Jordan's wife. So that's her claim to fame. So I married a hometown girl, and that made me a part of this community, and I feel like I've been a part of this community. And we've, we've always tried to come back. We've always gravitated back. We, we, in the military, we tried to get assignments close. We got two assignments in Georgia, two assignments in Mississippi so that we could travel back to Columbiana. In the 80s, when I had to go on an unaccompanied tour to Iceland, Kathy and the kids moved back to Columbiana, and the kids went to school here. We did actually get a chance to move back here in, in the 90s, Our kids going to school here as well. And at that time, we purchased a home here. And the home that we purchased was from her mother, and it's the same home that Kathy grew up in. So we still live in that home today, and we came back to be a part of Columbiana again in 2011 because my defense industry career was always taking me away. And, and so we've been there now, and we're there today. All of our kids at some point in time went to school here, and four of our five grandkids were born here and went to school here. So what I want to do is use my leadership experience and industry experience, best practices, lessons learned over the 45 years in the government service to make our home a better place. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Vick, same question. Why do you want to be mayor for the city of Columbiana? Well, uh, I am a retired employee for the city of Columbiana for the past 28 years. Uh, during that time, I, I've seen a lot of things go on in Columbiana, some good, some bad. Uh, I was always on the other side of the fence because I was an employee for the city. Uh, I've seen a lot of things that could be done different in the city. There's some changes that could be made. Uh, there's some projects that needs to be finished that has some pro projects been going on 15 years or better. So when I retired, I, I thought, well, now I have the opportunity to have a voice. Uh, because before, uh, I was an employee. Uh, my voice didn't count. Uh, but now that I am retired, I think that uh, with my knowledge of the city, uh, there's a lot of benefit that could come out of that. Thank you. Ms. Whiting, same question. Why do you want to be mayor for the city of Columbiana? First of all, good evening and thank you for this opportunity. And when Coach Phillips was standing up talking about what residents had asked him when he first shared that he wanted to be on the council, they asked him a, something to the same effect that they asked me, have I lost my mind? <laughs> and what I said to them, no, I have not lost my mind. I'm called, I love Columbiana. I was born and raised in Shelby. And although I lived in Shelby, my parents shopped in Columbiana, they did all their business in Columbiana, and I attended school in Columbiana. I'm a graduate of Shelby County High School. I permanently moved to Columbiana in 1986 after my husband, Leslie, was medically discharged from the United States Army. We raised our children here in Columbiana. They all attended the schools here in Columbiana. We supported the schools through our um, volunteer service, and they all graduated from Shelby County High School. It is our hope that one of our seven grandchildren will graduate from Shelby County High School, so it's not too late for that to happen. But I'm here, I'm standing here tonight because I truly would like to serve Columbiana. I'm a proven servant leader. And through my commitment to the service that I've served in, the, in many and various 
various capacities in this city since 1986. I believe that is indicative of my love for this community and that I'm willing to step out in this position, a position I've never sought before. I'm not a politician. I heard Ricky when he said that. I'm not a politician. I am a servant leader. And that's what I want to do for Columbiana. During these many times of uncertainties, there's, there's things that are happening right now that this nation is shaken and we don't know what's going to happen next. And I believe that I can be instrumental in bridging gaps between differences, generations, race, and gender. In addition to inspiring others to become the best versions of themselves for the purpose of building a healthy community, for the purpose of building a healthy Columbiana, as a servant leader, I hope to be a catalyst in creating an environment where all the citizens of Columbiana can flourish and move forward in unity as we move through these challenging times. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and now we'll start our second question with Ms. Khan. So this is a two-part question, and I'll repeat it, but it does all tie together. Um, um, what, in your opinion, are the priorities and responsibilities of the city's mayor, and what, based upon those, what skills or strengths do you possess which you believe will benefit the city? So priorities and responsibilities of Columbiana's mayor, and then the skills or strengths that you think you possess that will benefit the city. I think... I think the first one would be to listen to the citizens of Columbiana and, and listen to what they need and want, to let them be a part of what we do. Uh, I've been to the council meeting many, many times and had a problem with an issue, and you have to sit there and keep your mouth shut. You're not allowed to say anything. And, you know, if, if I'm elected, I want all the citizens to have an input on anything that comes before the council to change the city. Well, and then just what um, skills, and you touch on that a little bit, but what skills or strengths do you possess which you think will benefit the city? Well, I've been in business for over 23 years. I think uh, with that, uh, we've, we've been pretty successful. I think that helps in guiding the city and understanding how the city works. I've been to many, many council meetings. Uh, I keep up with the agendas, the budgets. So I'm very familiar with that. And I just, I, I think that's a great asset to already know how the city works. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell, I wasn't trying to cut off applause. I'm sorry. You could have kept applauding if you wanted to. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, same question, two part. What, in your opinion, are the priorities and responsibilities of the city's mayor? And if you're elected, what skills or strengths do you possess which you think will benefit the city? Okay, so the mayor wears a lot of hats. Okay, so the mayor of a city is basically the chief executive of that city. That mayor needs to establish a vision for the city, working with the community and the residents and the leadership of the city to do that and then a strategies uh, for the city so that you can execute whatever that vision is. What's our future going to look like? The mayor is also a chief operating officer. He has to efficiently and effectively lead the city's uh, operations and make sure that we have the services and the infrastructure to support those services and the citizens and the residents of our city. He's also the chief financial officer. The mayor has to be a good steward of the city's assets and its financial resources and make sure that the city makes the most effective use of those resources. He's head of sales and marketing. He has to market the city so that we can grow. He's an ambassador. He represents the city to the state, the county, everywhere we go. He's the listener in chief. And I know my wife's rolling her eyes back in her head now and says he never listens to anything. But I will try to listen and I will try to be empathetic so I can know and understand what your needs and wants are. And then he's a leader and in my case he's a husband, he's a father, he's a grandfather, he's a patriot, he's a veteran and he's somebody who's proud to serve. Part two, I get double time. <laughs> Skills or strengths okay. that you possess will benefit. So real quickly, leadership I think is number one for me. Um, 
I mentioned being in the military. You get lots and lots and lots and lots of leadership training in the military. But the key to leadership in the military or the true test is when you get to lead men in combat. And I feel like that I've met that test. I've got lots and lots and lots of leadership experience and training from industry. I've got experience to help us do all the things we need to do in the city, strategic planning, leading organizations the size of Columbiana, creating and growing business, running the city's infrastructure, sales and marketing, conducting business, negotiating, contracting, and Kathy and I have also been small business owners. So we think we can bring a lot to help the city grow. Thank you. Mr. Bick. So two-part question. What, in your opinion, are the priorities and responsibilities of the city's mayor? And then, tying that in, what specific skills or strengths do you possess which you believe will benefit the city of Columbiana? Well, I think, first of all, the mayor is uh, the role is, is the everyday operation of the city. Uh, he's got to be involved every day uh, to make sure the city runs efficiently. Uh, he has to meet regular with his department head to make sure that job is done. Um, each day he has to, to go out and, and be on the job site sometimes. Uh, he can't just sit in the office. He's got to go out and, and watch the progress to make sure it's being done. Uh, also, he has to work closely with his council. Uh, the council makes a lot of financial decisions, so the mayor's got to work closely with the council he has uh, to make sure the funds are available for whatever project is going on at the time. As far as my, my leadership skills, uh, I've, I've proven I've, I've uh, been a leader in this community for over 28 years. Uh, I, know, uh, I know how to problem solve. I've done it before. Uh, I know how to fix problems. So uh, that plays a big role in, in, in making the city run smooth. Is just being able to sit down and solve problems before it ever makes it to the table. So my problem-solving skills, I, I would say, are good. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Ms. Whiting, I'm sorry. I was supposed to. No, you're good. Yeah, come on. That was my role to make sure you knew it was time to come up. <laughs> um, no, you're fine. That's on me. Uh, I had one job. <laughs> uh, Two-part question, what, in your opinion, are the priorities and responsibilities of the city's mayor? And then also, could you tie in specific skills or strengths that you possess which you believe will benefit the city of Columbiana? Okay, the responsibilities of a mayor is to oversee the administrative operations of all the departments of the city. In addition, the mayor is the face, the voice, and the host of the city. The mayor is the liaison between the people in the city, and a mayor should also work alongside their council. The mayor should always be inviting and ready to listen and to the needs and the concerns of all the citizens. The mayor is, accountability, is accountable to the citizens and the council, should understand that, no institu that an institution is no greater than the people they serve. In addition, the mayor should understand that the success of a great city is linked to the well-being of every citizen. A mayor is a servant leader, should be a servant leader, balanced with uh, discipline, who facilitates and, me and mediates, but who also knows how to inspire and motivate. A mayor should know how to bridge gaps. A mayor should be very good at coordinating, communicating, and collaborating. In reference to the specific skills that I believe, I believe that I bring to the mayorship that would benefit the city, I know how to coordinate, communicate, and collaborate. And as mayor, I will employ these elements on a daily basis. I believe that the utilization of these elements can help us overcome and face any issues that come our way. And also, I believe that they can that to uh, coordinate, communicate, and collaborate will be instrumental in unifying us as a community. My heart for leadership and my experience as a servant leader, along with my academic background in education and social and cultural studies, has equipped me with the skill set to address the to address many diverse issues with a diverse group of people in an ever-changing diverse community and world. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bice, yes. So again, uh, same question, two-part question. What, in your opinion, are the priorities and responsibilities of the city's mayor? 
And then could you all, in your answer, try to tie in specific skills or strengths that you possess which you believe will benefit the city? Well, I think most of my colleagues have covered most everything. Uh, it's very little left unsaid. The mayor needs to be a leader. He needs to work with the people, work with the council, uh, listen to the citizens. And, and of course, his job is to, to run the city efficient and uh, economical, listen to the department head. Like I say, everything has already been said, I'm, I'm repeating, but it, it's, that's the mayor's job is to, to listen to the people, run the department efficiently, you know, do the things that the, the citizens ask of him, not what he wants, but what the citizens of Columbiana want. And that is, you know, my position is what the mayor should do. As far as my skills, I've been running a business, garage business owner, for over 30 years now, working with the public every day. And if anybody, like Susan knows, working with the public ain't always easy. It's, you cannot please all the people all the time. But anyway, that, that being said, it's the same with the mayor. You're not gonna please all the people all the time, but you just gotta go out there and do the best you can and please the majority of the people that want to come in and, and hear, have their voices heard. And like I say, with my experience as running a business, I understand the needs of people. And I think I could do that as, the, as your mayor. Thank you. Mr. Bice, good news, you won't have to go last anymore, so, so you won't have to. All right, now we're gonna start our third question with Mr. Mitchell. Okay, we're gonna, get a, we're gonna give you an opportunity to be a little bit more specific. So, what are three specific things you hope to accomplish during your first two years in office if you're elected mayor? Okay. Um those of you who may have been following my website and my Facebook page and some of the comments that I've made earlier tonight, you know that I think it's extremely important that the city of Columbiana had a, have a vision. And we need to know what we want the future of Columbiana to look like. That vision is something that I would like everybody in the city to have an opportunity to participate in. And then if we're going to make that vision, if we're going to achieve that vision, we need a strategy and we need to plan to do it. And the most focused thing that we need to be working on initially is sustained and manageable economic growth. The second thing is I want to uh, improve the management, transparency, and timely reporting of the city's financials. Uh, one of our council candidates mentioned the monthly report. Absolutely, we need to do that. There's no reason why we shouldn't do monthly and quarterly reports, and they should be available for the public to see so that you can know uh, how the city is spending your money. That's probably the most sacred trust that you give us is the fin financial management of your tax dollars and the management of the city's resources. And then the last thing is I think, and, and this has been said by other candidates, and, and I think some of it already goes on today, but I think we can improve community engagement. I don't think that we communicate to our citizens nearly enough as far as what we are trying to do in the city of Columbiana, what the leadership is trying to do. An example is when I was walking around knocking on doors and telling people come to the candidate forum, it's at the Grand Hall at the Old Mill Square. They all said, what's the Old Mill Square? They knew the Shelby County Arts Council, but they didn't know the Old Mill Square. These are longtime residents uh, of, of the community. So we've got to do a better job of communicating and we can pull more people in, I think, and get more people involved in city government. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Vick? Yes, sir. Okay, so same question. What are three specific things you hope to accomplish during your first two years in office if you're elected mayor? Well, the first thing I would like to accomplish is uh, the budget to make sure uh, our operating expense, the funds are available. Uh, like Mr. Mitchell said, we need a uh, financial report that tells everything. So that needs to be... Uh, on a monthly report, uh, we need to set some goals. We need to, we need to uh, 
figure out exactly how much money we can spend within a year. Uh, we need to set priorities. We have no priorities. Uh, sometimes they'll set priorities, but then they, they go out the door. Uh, we need to set priorities of what needs to be repaired in this city. Uh, fix those projects first. We need to uh, third. We need to look at the projects that's on the books now. We've uh, we've got some projects that needs to be finished. Uh, we need to try to to finish those projects before we begin new ones. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Miss <laughs> Whiting. So same question. What are three specific things you hope to accomplish during your first two years in office if you're elected mayor? In reference to that question, what I see is a vision for Columbiana to be socially, culturally, and economically strong. And so that's how I've separated my three things. So under the social, what this means is that this uh, compasses the social needs, the basic human needs for every individual in the city, which would include needs of health, education, and safety, So, in ref and also a, a, a need to be involved. So to address the need to be involved, what, I'd like, what I would like to establish is community forums or, or town hall forums that would be uh, a forum by district where the district representative, the council person for the district, along with their constituents, constituents would be able to come to City Hall and we would have an informal open discussion. I would like to include department heads to address any issues or concerns that they have because I believe that it's important for every citizen in this city to know that they have a voice and they need to be heard. And in doing so, I believe that it would help them w want to be more engaged in the city. Culturally, I would like to, for us to continue to work alongside our, outside our school system, to continue to develop senior citizens programs, to continue to work with the Shelby County Arts Council, to synthesize the athletic programs between the city and the school. And why that is important is because I believe that the fundamentals that are being taught to our athletes need to be consistent across the board. It needs to start when they're four years old and it needs to be consistent all the way to high school. I believe that that synthesis between those programs programs can be beneficial to the individual athletes, but also beneficial to the school as well. I also would like to introduce educational enrichment programs, and, and I believe that when you take care of the social and the cultural needs of the city, the economic growth will, will come, because in doing that, Columbiana will become more attractive, accessible, and sustainable first to the citizens that live here, and then to those that are seeking to move to this city, whether a business or individuals. So I believe that we need to make sure that we take care of social, cultural, and economic needs of the city. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bice. Mr. Bice, same question. What are three specific things you hope to accomplish during your first two years in office if you're elected mayor? You know, the first, first thing I would like to accomplish is to, to make Columbiana economically, uh, I don't know how to say this, uh, not dependent on any borrowing money or whatever, get us, get us economically, uh, you know, out of, out of debt or whatever, which it's going to take more than two years, I know. But that would be a, a vision that I would see. Uh, second thing maybe would be I would like to work with the youth programs, help do some things to our youth parks, facilities. I've been there as a grandparent and a parent, and you know we need, we need a lot of work done around those, those facilities and to, to get more people involved, to get our youth involved. Uh, third thing I would like to see, a lot of our, our council meetings and, and any of our meetings go live stream to get the community involved. We have people sitting at home that would love to come to these meetings or love to come to these forums, and they're making dinner for their children. You know, they have small children. If, if we had a live stream, they could get involved more and, and be more, con, con, uh, put more into the city, you know, and let us know what they need. And that's what we need is the citizens involved to, to let us know what we can do as the mayor and council. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Khan, same question. Um, what are three specific things you hope to accomplish during your first two years in office if you're elected mayor? One of my big ones would be 
like uh, Mr. Vick said, I would like to see more accountability at City Hall. I have, for the past two years, uh, the city clerk has hated to see me coming. Uh, I'm real big on trying to, when there's a project going, if we spend $10 million or we spend $5 million, walking up to City Hall, no matter what time of the project, if you're in the middle of it, the end of it, being able to go to that City Hall and say, okay, what did we bid on this project? What is the cost of it as today's date? That's something you cannot get at our city hall. Uh, she has provided paperwork. Uh, we've kept tried to keep a running list of projects. Uh, I just think it's very important that we know what we're spending, that we know what we're bidding, and everybody should know, not just the mayor, because that's important. That's how people gain our trust by knowing what we're doing. You know, and like, like Mr. Bice said and, and all, I, I want to see the council meetings live stream. I've brought it up at the council meeting several, several times, and I got voted down every single time I brought up having the council meetings live stream. I was told, people need to come to the meeting. Well, you know, in this day and time when people are busy, there's not always time to come to a council meeting. You can flip on your phone, whatever the case may be. You can listen. You can see what's happening. You can hear what's happening. You can put your input. You can call your councilman. You can let them know what's going on. Just being part of a city and, and knowing everything that's going on. I mean, whether you agree or not, we're all in this together. We have to work to make our city a better place. Thank you. Uh, just before we go to our next question, uh, uh, both of you have said a couple of things. Just real quick, please tell your friends who couldn't be here while it's not being live streamed. I want to thank Shelby County Newspapers. It is being filmed, and this is going to go on their website, YouTube channel, Chambers website. So it'll be aired starting tomorrow. So uh, feel free to share that with other folks, and we're going to get the word out too. So anyway, um, uh, okay, question number four. Mr. Vic, we'll start with you. Okay, this is another sort of two-parter. So y'all have plenty of time to answer this. So um, as mayor, what plans, if any, do you have to help attract more businesses into the city of Columbiana? And while you're giving that answer, what is your stance on incentivizing business growth for both existing business? And then what assistance programs do you feel should be in place, perhaps for new businesses coming in? So what are your plans to attract more business and then share your thoughts on incentives and then assistance for both existing and new businesses. What your stance is on that? Well, first of all, we have to promote the city. We have to make the city more attractive in, in different areas of our town. Uh, we, we need to promote it so these businesses will come and look at our, our city and say, you know, we want to be here. Uh, the incentive part is... is usually a tax incentive, but there's other ways that the city can do it. There, there's ways we can improve a, an entrance to a property, a driveway. We can do a, a sewer fee rates. There's, there's different ways in, besides a tax incentive to draw business in. And any new business that comes to uh, Columbiana, uh, you know, we need to let them know that our population doubles during the daytime. Uh, we have over 25 uh, county and state government buildings within our community. Uh, there's a uh, there's two to four thousand people that travel through Columbiana every day. Uh, so we need to uh, have the businesses, the the ones that are here and there, and the ones that are coming. Uh, they need to know to uh, attract these people, so we can get their dollar before they leave town. Uh, we need <clears throat> we need their money. Uh, they come here on a daily basis uh, in and out of our city. Uh, so it's up to the business to attract those people where they're visiting in our town. And, and like I say, it's uh, between two and 4,000 people that come to Columbiana on a daily basis. Uh, so that's left up to the business to figure out how to attract that. 
And also the city could have some kind of input uh, to maybe draw a little more customers to that, that particular business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Whiting? Same question. What plans, if any, do you have to help attract more businesses into the city of Columbiana? And then, uh, in your answer, try to share your stance on incentivizing businesses to grow and then your position on assistant programs that might be in place. Okay, at first I want to say that I totally agree with Mr. Vick when he, when he talked about marketing the, uh, uh, the fact that Columbiana draws a lot of people into the city every day. This Columbian is the county seat of Shelby County, and that within itself will attract businesses because of the governmental buildings that we have here and the services that this county provides to the citizens throughout Shelby County. And Shelby County is still one of the fastest growing counties in the nation. So that alone will attract people to, Shelby, to Columbiana. Another thing that we need to market more is that Columbiana is an Alabama opportunity zone. And so with that comes tax incentives, incentives to investors that are looking to grow their business in Columbiana. I think that once we uh, are socially, culturally, and economically developed, that that alone will attract people to Columbiana. But I want to say that it's always important, it will be important to me as a mayor, to make sure that we are attracting, but we also need to sustain the businesses that we have here. We need to make sure that we continue to meet the needs of the businesses and the citizens that we have here. So we need to ask the questions. How will our citizens benefit? How does these uh, new businesses fit into with our existing businesses? And will our infrastructure support these new businesses? In reference to our incentive, incentives, I'm for incentives but I believe that Columbiana needs to develop a protocol and a standard operating procedure plan to make sure that there's equity across the board to investors that are looking to come to Columbiana so that everyone can be treated fairly. I, I also believe that an SOP, uh, which that's a military term, standard operating procedures, will be effective in developing uh, and transparency, accountability, uh, and for future investors. And I think that that's important that the council, the leadership of the city, make a decision in, these, in this uh, SOP as to what incentives can we give and what are we willing to give because it's important that we don't, we want to offer incentives, but we don't want to give away too much. So I think that it's something that we need to study a bit more. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bice. Same question. Uh, what plans, if any, do you have to help attract more business into the city of Columbiana as the mayor, and then if you could share your thoughts on your stance on incentivizing business to grow and then assistance programs you feel might be worthwhile to have in place. Um, there again, uh, I think that we do need to go out and seek some of these other, seek, seek new, new companies and seek, we've got a lot of empty buildings in Columbiana that we could do something with it, to give somebody some incentive to come in here and buy or rent or lease and get those buildings operatable so that we can use them to the best of the ability to help Columbiana grow. To and, and any business we bring into Columbiana, you got all these new subdivisions, you need people to work those businesses. So there again, that's going to bring more money into the city to help operate the city and help it to grow. So. I think we need to, to, like I say, open up some of these old buildings, remodel them, whatever it needs to do, but invite people into them and, and that can use them for whatever, but just go out and seek all the, the peoples, you know, that we can for the businesses. Uh, I, I think that's about all i got to say for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Kahn. So, uh, same question. Uh, what plans, if any, as mayor, do you have to help attract more businesses into the city of Columbiana? And then please share your stance on incentives or incentivizing businesses to grow and then assistance programs that you feel might be in place. Well, a couple of mine have already been implemented. We had a uh, meeting after the council meeting last week. We've had a problem with areas being Tra trash in yards, tires, old cars. Uh, our policemen uh, have been in our neighborhood. The houses that we have problems with, they've 
already taken the steps to go to them and say, hey, you have 30 days to clean up. Uh, that, that's a big asset. When people come to Columbiana, the first thing they see is our city. What a pretty city we have. You know, they all want to come here to live because we have something not a lot of people have. We all care for people. We've got businesses. We've got two of the largest museums outside of uh, Columbiana that exist. We need to promote them more. We need to get with mayors. We need to do whatever we need to do to try to develop and, and get people into our town to fill up our businesses. But it doesn't help to get businesses if our citizens don't support them. I mean, there's people come to my shop to this day, and I've been open 23 years that say, man, I thought you was just a florist. I didn't know you had gifts. I didn't know you had antiques. So it helps for people to know what other businesses are doing. It, it helps for our council people to go around and visit, not just because you're elected or not just because you won, but go to your district, drive through your cities, drive through your area, see what's going on, see what needs to be done. If you see trash, you see things that need to be cleaned up, don't be afraid to bring it to the council and talk about it because that's how it gets settled. That's how it gets solved. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell, uh, same question. You don't need to repeat it. I've heard it four times already. So, uh, and uh, a lot of the things I'm gonna say have been said, but I'm gonna try to package it a little bit different. So uh, hopefully it'll make some sense to you. So you've heard about marketing. I am not aware of a, an official marketing plan or strategy for the city of Columbiana. I think we need a visible and effective marketing plan for this city so that businesses, prospective businesses, uh, customers who want to come into the businesses that we already have, know what it is that we have to offer for this city. And, it, and, and so I do know that there are people in our city administration who do try to market and sell our city, but we do not have a cohesive and effective plan to do that. So we need to broaden our, our marketing and make it more visible and effective. You've heard this from me before, vision and strategy, and we need to communicate that to our businesses so everybody's on board with this thing. I mean, not everybody's obviously going to agree, but, but hopefully we'll be able to collaborate in the creation of that vision and strategy so that we can get everybody on board. But if you have prospective businesses come into Columbiana and you have a vision of how this city can grow, which is what they're interested in, they're interested in growing their business, and you have a plan on how you're going to make it happen, they're going to say, you know what, I want to bring my business to Columbiana because they have that effective vision and strategy and they're implementing it. Teresa brought up the uh, opportunity zones. And that's just one example of the other thing that would attract businesses. There are lots of federal, state, county resources that are available to help us grow our businesses. I believe that we've been complacent and haven't been taking advantage of those things like the opportunity zones. And that leads me into my last thing, which is incentivize, which was the second part of your question. Now, a lot of people don't agree with incentives, and they think that uh, it's a waste of money. But if we don't incentivize the businesses or go to somebody else who will incentivize, basically the types of incentives that we have are like uh, tax rebates or investment incentives. But the most important thing that we need to do before we in incentivize any new business, before we make an investment, we need to do a business case analysis and understand how they're going to pay back that incentive that they, that they get. Okay? And we need to understand what the payback period is, and it needs to be a reasonable uh, period of time. But there's other non-monetary incentives, incentives that we can give to businesses. And somebody brought up earlier the Career Technical Education Center that we have right here in Columbiana, the housing and the affordable housing, schools, uh, churches, availability of health care. We've got lots of intangible types of incentives that will help us bring businesses. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Whiting, we'll start with you. 
All right, so I know several of you have said you want to check with the, the folks who live in the community, develop a plan and all that kind of stuff. But you've also mentioned that you're the leader. You're the marketing leader, you're the chief financial person, et cetera. So as mayor, let's imagine all of these people in the audience and the people on TV are considering moving to this beautiful city. How would you describe Columbiana when asked by someone wanting to move to the city of Columbiana? I first would say Columbiana is my home, so I'm speaking from experience. Then I would say Columbiana is not only my home, but Columbiana is the home of over 4,000 citizens and growing. I would also say that Columbiana has many natural resources, and I would talk about our museums. I would talk about our schools. Who we have a great school, two great school systems, with the Shelby County School System and Cornerstone School System. I will let them know that we are a community. We believe in taking care of each other. That one of the main focuses uh, of this community is to gather together. And I know that COVID nineteen has prevented some of that, but I'm expecting that in the future we will be able to gather together again. I will let them know that as the county seat. There is uh, there's always traffic in uh, coming in and out of Columbiana, and that as and then one of the things I would I would, would hope be able to, hopefully be able to tell them that the mayor and the council are a, a tight knit group of leaders that believe in working alongside each other, which means that we do not always have to agree, but we can agree to disagree. And we can agree to make sure that we represent unity because the citizens of this city, when they look at the leaders of the city, they follow suit. And if they see us in disharmony, then that causes them to be in disharmony. So that's what I would say to people looking to come to Columbia, that we're here to meet every need that every citizen has and that we have an open door policy and that they're always welcome to City Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bice. Okay, so just as a reminder, you're the leader of the city. That includes marketing the city. All of these people here in the audience and the folks that will be watching this video starting tomorrow, how would you describe Columbiana to them if they've asked you that they're interested in moving to Columbiana? I would say that it's a beautiful, quiet city. Uh, Great schools, great place to work, great, got lots of amenities that are here locally that we could uh, enjoy. We got a great youth facility. I, I love the youth facility over there. It is, it, you know, if you have children, grandchildren, it's a place to go to spend your weekends or your nights to, to enjoy and, and watch your children grow. Uh, there again, it's a hell. Uh, Great place to live, small town, quiet town. I think the uh, 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 no, no. <laughs> the uh, violence, not not violence, but crime rate. That's what I'm trying to get. Crime rate is low. It's a good, good quiet town. That's good. You might got to worry about your children going out. Uh, as far as I know, it's it's a great place. Uh, I would let my children. Go anywhere in the town, you know, unassisted. I don't think there's a person in Columbiana that would harm one of our children because I think the citizens of Columbiana are going to watch our children, whether you're there or not. If they get out of your sight, I know Ricky and, and the other people at the ballpark, they, they got their eyes out there. They're, they know what's going on with our, our children. So I think it's a great place to live, raise your children, and, and grow a family. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Khan? So same question. Uh, as mayor, uh, these folks here in the audience and the folks that are watching on the video are thinking about moving to this beautiful city. How would you describe Columbiana to someone thinking about moving here? We have what you need. We have community. We have people that care for everybody. We have uh, schools. We have churches. We have museums. We have the knowledge that everybody here is concerned about somebody. If something happens to one of us, we're all involved. If people need financial aid, if they need just chicken soup, if they're sick, there's always somebody that's going to help. We have what a lot of cities would give anything to have. It's the love of our community 
and to be safe and, and to care for what we have. Thank you very much. Mr. Mitchell. Do I need to repeat? No, you don't. Okay. No, you don't. So if I were a used car salesman, I'd say, come on down to Columbia. But you know, Columbiana is the county seat of the wealthiest county in the state of Alabama. You know, this place ought to be prosperous and be able to offer a lot of things to just about anybody who wants to come here. We're centrally located in the state and the county. And so there's anything, if you want to do anything in the state of Alabama or the immediate region, you can get to it very quickly and easily from Columbiana. We're spring-loaded for growth. There are opportunities for you and your family. We are filling up housing developments as quick as we can build them, and we've got more on the books. You know, we have best-in-class arts and entertainment right here in Columbiana. This building that we're in right now, so come on down to Columbiana and see it. Now, if you love recreation and sports, if you like hunting, fishing, boating, we got it. And if you're not from Alabama, and you're just now coming to Alabama, we're going to let you know you got to choose. You can't sit on the fence. You got to be one or the other. And there's lots of anybody in Columbiana can help you with that decision. We're a town with a rich history. We can capitalize on that history, and we got lots of small town charm. And for those of you who want to start a business, we got a local government who's receptive to new business. Come on down. Thank you. Mr. Vick? Same? You want me to repeat? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what I would tell the people is uh, first of all, I tell them, welcome to Columbiana. And Columbiana uh, at night is a quiet town. Very quiet. But I would also tell them to get ready for the daytime because we're busy. We're busy in Columbiana. I would tell them about our volunteer fire department that is rated probably number one on the ISO ratings throughout the county. Um, they do a great job there. Our parks and wrecks, if you look at those of you who have, have kids, and you look around some of these other parks in the other cities, we've got some of the best facilities around. I would explain that to them. Our crime rate, we do have crime, but it's very low. It's, when you check statistics, it's low for our population. So I would welcome them to Clark County. But I, like I say, I would always tell them, you know, get ready for daytime because we're a busy little town during the day. Thank you. Okay, y'all take a deep breath, take a swig of water. Now you get to say yourselves. Um, this concludes the question and answer portion of the forum. We're now going to move into the closing statements. And uh, these were determined just before we started. And uh, I can't make this up. Uh, Mr. Vic is going to go first with his closing statement. It was, it was rigged. <laughs> well, I'm here tonight to uh, ask for your support as mayor. Uh, you know, I'm a longtime resident of Columbia. I worked for Columbia for 28 years. During that time, I've had a lot of uh, uh, things that I've seen over those those days throughout my patrol. I'm probably the only candidate here that's probably put over two or three hundred thousand miles inside one <laughs> uh, I know where every pothole, I know where every every pile of brush, every ditch it overflows. I know all of that. Uh, it's because I've worked here. I know I've, I've listened to the system of Columbia. I've heard their complaints. Some have been answered. Some never was answered. Uh, I see some daily problems that need to be fixed in our town. Uh, when I retired a year ago, that's when I decided that I wanted to run for mayor, that I could actually have a voice in that. Uh, I think with uh, my knowledge of the city, my, my knowledge of uh, everyday chores that come along with being the mayor, uh, would benefit this city. Uh, I think the council needs to have a, a voice. In the past, I've seen the council not have the voice. I, I think the council needs to work for their paycheck. Uh, like I said, they don't need to sit there and, and not be allowed to say anything. Uh, 
Uh, I think working together, we could get a lot of things done in our city. Uh, like I say, I love coming out. Uh, I put up with it for, like I say, 28 years. Uh, there's, there's not any street, there's not any light that's been out, and, and there's probably not many houses I haven't been to in Columbia. Uh, so it's a, it's a privilege for me to be able to run from here this time. Uh, and I asked uh, on the 25th, when you go out to vote, if you would, vote for Lamar Vick. Thank you. Our second candidate will be uh, Susan Redhead Khan. Ms. Khan? My name is Susan Khan, and I'm running for mayor. I've been married to Michael for 47 years. We have Kelly and my son in law, Walker, and we have three grand kids, which I'm very proud of. There is, I like Lamar. People ask, why are you running? Why, what would possess you to want to do this? And quite frankly, it's because I love this town and there's no place that I would rather live than right here in Columbiana. When people come to our town seeking the small town atmosphere, they look for the best schools, the churches, and businesses. We have pretty much all of the above. As we experience growth, we need to be a fully walkable community with sidewalks and streetlights. We need to expand our recreational facilities and fields. We need to put a lot more emphasis on our girls' fields. That's, I hear that a lot. The boys get the best, the girls take a back seat. This is one area that's important and we definitely need to develop more things for our children, uh, more events for them. And then I want to talk about the Art Center. Generally speaking, this project is very good for our city. However, we need to encourage and recognize that our, about our budget limitations. It is one of the projects in the city that is going to require immediate attention. An $11 million debt is a huge leap for a city with a general fund budget of less than $5 million. Currently, every $20 ticket sold at the Black Box Theater, the city garners 80 cents. If the Black Box Theater sells performances for seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, the city would receive enough money from the ticket sales to pay our half of the power bill. The same thing will go with the Grand Hall. It would have to be booked for at least seven events a week, 52 weeks a year, to just pay the mortgage payments. Neither of these situations are doable under the current structure. Without a more workable solution, the project will take away 15% of the city's general fund revenues. Folks, eventually, with this deficit, that means that a serious reduction in services. Whether anybody knows it or not, this is going to be one of the most pressing issues of our time. Here's my promise to you. Every new mayor inherits both good and bad from the previous administrations. I will assist that, insist that every single council meeting be live streamed. I would love for to have more transparency on decisions that would impact our city and would love to have the input of all the citizens at our council meetings and to be able to voice their opinions. I will bring the experience of running a successful business for 23 years to find solutions to any budget problems that we may have. On a lighter note, I think it's time to see what a local business owner, a woman business owner, can do to make our town be all that it can be. I humbly ask for your vote for mayor, and God bless our town. Thank you. Our third is on his way to the podium. What was the question? No question. Oh. So, most of the evening, um, the questions that you've heard, the responses that you've heard, have mostly been positive. Um, that's because there's 
A lot of good things that go on in Columbiana. There's a lot of good things that we can do to make Columbiana better. And so, so that's a good thing, okay? But notwithstanding all of those good things, Columbiana, our, and going on in Columbiana, our city faces some real challenges. So let's take off the rose-colored glasses for a minute and let's talk about that. So just about every uh, council member who came up here or council candidate came up here, all of the uh, mayoral candidates at some point in time talked about Columbiana's future, its growth, its business, its econo economy, if you will. But one of the things that's, uh, and, and so the cornerstone of our future is sustained and manageable economic growth. But over the last 20 years, Columbiana's growth has lagged the surrounding area. It's lagged the county. But what's most troubling of all is that our economic, that economically, Columbiana lags the nation, the state, and the county. The median household income in Columbiana is well below the state level, which ranks 46th in the nation. Now, by comparison, Shelby County's median household income is substantially higher than the national average. So we're the county seat of the wealthiest county in the state of Alabama, and yet economically, we're down here. Now, I've heard a lot, all the excuses. We don't have an interstate. We don't have this highway. We don't have this. We don't have that. I don't care. I don't accept the excuses. You should not accept the excuses. And I think working together, we need to do something to pull ourselves out of that hole and achieve the sustained and manageable growth that we need to achieve. So if you want to realize that growth, it requires leadership and leadership requires respect, but you can't command respect. You have to earn it. Now, people don't, a lot of people don't know me, so I've spent a lot of time trying to get people to, to, uh, to earn people's respect, but that's a continuous journey, and it's something that I'll continue to do when I'm mayor. If you're gonna lead a lot, large organization with a lot of moving parts like a city, it helps to have some experience, and I've got experience leading organizations the size of Columbiana. I've got the strategic planning experience that I've talked so much about. I've got experience creating and growing businesses and experiencing running the city infrastructure. Also contracting with government and private entities. Kathy and I have owned a small business, I've mentioned that. So we have to manage our growth and we have to make sure that we can effectively manage the resources and I've talked a lot about financial reports and, and getting them out to the, to the community in a timely manner. So I'm going to finish this up. I got a little bit off track because of the, the delay there, so bear with me. Columbiana's future is like a jigsaw puzzle. So to complete that puzzle, it takes every piece, every size, every shape, every color. And on top of that, all those pieces have to be interconnected. So if one piece comes loose, the entire puzzle comes apart. So to complete the puzzle, you, you have to know what it looks like. That's the vision that I've talked about. So I don't think we know what Columbiana's vision is. It also is best to have a plan or it's going to take you forever. I don't think we have a plan. So as mayor, I'm going to engage the city. I'm going to use every piece of the puzzle to develop that vision and strategic plan for growth. And it'll be a plan we can all know, understand, buy into, and working together, we'll achieve it. I look forward to serving you. Appreciate your vote on Tuesday. Thank you. As I stated earlier, I'm a lifelong resident, resident of Shelby County, and I've seen a lot of things happen in my lifetime. And I've seen Columbiana overcome and become better through a lot of things. I can go all the way back to starting school here in Columbiana in a segregated Columbiana. This city was able to embrace integration. And I can tell you that this city, I can't ever say that not one educator or anyone in this city ever said anything negative to me as a student in the school system here in Columbiana. I'm grateful and I'm blessed to be able to stand here and say that there are educators that still live in Columbiana that sold into my life. And I thank them for that. And as an educator, I now understand 
what it means to educate your, your students, not just to go off to college and never return home, but to go off to college or to, to, or to whatever career they decide to go, to, to go into, but to do that and come back and invest and become invested in their community. And that's what I have done. I am here to serve Columbiana. I'm committed to integrity and an open door policy and treating every citizen, every employee, and every business owner with the utmost respect. I strongly believe in the principle, and I said this already, that an institution is no greater than the people they serve, and that a city is linked, the, the greatness of a city, the success of a city is linked to the well-being of every citizen in this city. I want to create an environment where every citizen in this city, city will have an opportunity to belong and feel that they belong. Because I've talked to citizens throughout this city, and I've had citizens say to me that they feel they've been here many years, but they feel like an outsider. So I want Columbiana to be attractive, to be accessible, and be sustainable first to the citizens. And I believe that when that is done, that every citizen in this city will make a decision that they're going to spend their money here in Columbiana. It is my hope and my desire to be a catalyst in creating an environment where all the citizens of Columbiana can flourish. To flourish is to find fulfillment in our lives, to accomplish meaningful and worthwhile tasks, connecting with each other through a deeper level. In our essence, it means to live the good life. In saying that, I'm committed to the social, cultural, and economic growth of the city. And in doing so, I hope to continue to grow the city and move us forward. We cannot go back. As mayor, will I make mistakes? Yes, I will. But I'm hoping to learn from my mistakes. And as far as the city is concerned, I know that we can overcome any problems or issues that we face as long as we work together. When I speak of community, I'm speaking of the essence of us as a people. Community is bigger than geography. Community is a network with a people with common interests who collaborate by sharing information, resources, ideas, and dreams. Community is vital to a great city because we are better together. I stand here tonight first and foremost to let you know that I'm anchored through my faith in God and that I am a woman of integrity with a vested interest in Columbiana. And I hope that on Tuesday that you would give me the opportunity to serve you as your mayor. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for hosting us. Well, Mr. Vice, I told you you wouldn't be last again, and I apologize. We all make but, mistakes. So please share your closing comment. All right. In closing, I would like to say that I would like to serve the city of Columbiana. I would do my utmost uh, integrity and, and do the best I can to work with the citizens and with the council and with the, all of the people in Columbiana, with the different departments to, to make this a, a growing city, a better city. It's a good city already. We don't have anything to complain about, I don't think. But, but there is room, always room for growth and room for improvement. So as your mayor, I would like to work together with the, the community to make it a better growing community. And so I ask for your vote on the 25th. So if you don't vote for me, just get out and vote. Let your voice be heard. Well, I don't know about y'all, but there are five solid individuals that are seeking to run for mayor, so let's give all of them one more round of applause. Thanks to each of you for being here this evening. We appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts and vision for the city of Columbiana. And also, thanks to each of you for being here as well. And to those of you watching on the video, we hope you found this informative and worthwhile use of your time. And finally, you've heard already, please remember to go out on Tuesday the 25th and vote. Uh, for the candidate of your choice. I'm sure that they'll be here to answer any of the questions, but we're officially adjourned for tonight's forum. Thanks for being here.